Let me show you my countryside Through these old headlights We can take this road as far as you want to go I'll show you how a country mile Can take us all night Feeling high when it pulls the tail up an old dirt road I ain't gonna run or hide We can let the fire burn wild That's just my Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are a returning friend, welcome back. Thank you for spending another video with us. My name is Lorena and this is my husband. Hi, Troy. Troy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we are uh, compiling a video today to kind of document our process, what things were like, what things are like now, what we're doing now, because there's so many people uh, buying land, like so many people looking to homestead, looking for their next place, looking to do it for the first time ever. Um, and there's really not, there's really not a whole lot available. <laughs> Hello. Um, there's really not a whole lot available. And what is available, um, is just not uh, ideal as far as having pasture, having it cleared. I mean, just the red carpet rolled out ready for you, right? So I wanted to, number one, document, but number two, go through and kind of help y'all, like help the people that are looking to buy raw land. We're going from burbs to boonies. That is kind of our whole uh, motto. And so we're going to share here what things were like before we did everything that we're doing now. So when we found the property, what, what was it? Back in January of 2022? Yes. January 2022, we found this property. We were living in Hampstead and we were there for a year from Ohio and we realized that we wanted to pursue the dream of farming, buying land, doing that whole thing. So we found this in January 2022. Can you tell them a little bit like what what had happened to the property before we found it and then the condition that it was in when we got it? So. The land itself was forest. It was uh, we're surrounded by what it m most likely looked like. Uh, but about four to five years ago, we think the people that owned this land sold the timber, sold the pine, and it was pretty much clear cut. There's a couple of big trees here and there that were in a low area. There were stumps everywhere. Brush was grown in. They would cleared a little bit of the front where the driveway was um, so they could come in and do like a uh, septic test to make sure that you could build on and all that stuff. Uh, but it was pretty rough. Otherwise it was brambles and briars and trails, and just lots of ants and stumps and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So that's a little bit of what it was like before and when we got it, when we found it. Um, it's not much different now with what's behind me here. There was a lot of this broom straw back here. We cleared um, the portion where the house is going to go. So that's the brush stack that you see on the side there. That did take some topsoil off, but it really allowed us the ability to design things exactly the way that we want them as far as where the garden is, as far as where the shed is and the building and just all the things. It kind of just cleared everything out of the way so that we could put it in right away. So yes, it came with some costs of tearing that topsoil off, which in a way I kind of regret that, but it really would not have allowed the ability to, to do everything as quickly as we wanted. So there's some pros and cons to that. So we're going to go through and just kind of show you what it's like um, now. We'll do some video clips of that. And then we'll show you um, or tell you a little bit more of the process of what we're currently doing now to get it to where we want it to be in the future. So I'm going to go through and show you some clips of what we're working with right now. And then we're going to have him talk a little bit more about what the process is that he's using right now to be able to clear it because so many people don't have the funds, number one, and really allocating those funds to big machinery. We are not fans. I mean, sure, I'd take a tractor if it was thrown at me, right? <laughs> but we're not big fans of going out and spending a bunch of money and making payments and doing all of that 
when we are just trying to work on what's in front of us and taking care of the kids and homeschooling. And so really going and just buying that machinery is not realistic. For most people, it's not realistic. So we're gonna go through and tell you a little bit of what the process is for getting this cleared up so that we can put animals on it too. Okay, so when we purchased the land, this is pretty much how it was, but with stumps and, you know, all the things from it being cleared. Now, what is the process that you're doing to get it to where we want it to go? So when they cleared it, it was cleared. Uh, there were so many huge stumps in here from when they logged it. They left all the stumps, most of them 12 to 18 inches high, some of them lower, but all different kinds of stumps, this whole... The whole land is filled with it. So in order for us to make pastures, the minimum would be to dig all those stumps out. But we also had scrub brush and scrubby little trees that we don't really want, not the kind of trees you want to keep. And not really much positive here in this area. So we had it cleared, um, pushed all those stumps aside. And made these. You can see these piles back here. There's one here and then one further back. In just a year, uh, nature has almost taken it back over. It was a pile of dirt. And now there's so much growing in there and habitat and things that are coming. So another couple of years, this is all going to start to break down into actually probably really good soil because of the stumps and the branches and all the things. It'll kind of be like compost within there. It'll be good earthy soil in a few years. Um, but what has happened on the land that we cleared in just a year is that it's filled up with briars and broom sedge and basically what they call pioneer species, which are beets. Nice way to say beets. Um, and that's what's filling in here. So we've looked at a, lo a lot of different ways to try to turn this into usable pasture with, from fertilizing and lime and seed after seed after seed. Um, and then, and also using animals to do it. And who did we have out here that uh, was talking about uh, the North Carolina County uh, Extension office yeah. was out here. The guy that does the, what is it like pasture prep basically. Uh -huh. And was talking about how we can use truckloads of synthetic fertilizer, lime, lime. and all the things. Tons you know, and tons and tons of lime and things like that. And which to us just doesn't seem the route that um, that is what number one cost effective, but number two, it doesn't seem like it's going to be like as easy as they want it to be like you're going to get out here and everything's just going to be magical and you're going to have what you want right away we know that there's going to be a conversion process to this and that just kind of seems to cut corners and with that we realize comes a cost um and so we really don't want that method and it's not god's natural way of doing it either so looking at natural ways to do this and looking at the chemical way to do this we're really not, as we're going to just explain, we're not into the chemical way to do much of anything if we can avoid it. So we will avoid it. And then we talked to who? Who did we talk to that was talking about permaculture methods? Or uh, we, we went to, uh, where was that at? A far, some, the in farm Asheville, where you live. Farm where you live in Asheville last spring. 
and talk to different people. But uh, we talked to one of the YouTubers that we watch a lot, Billy from Permaculture, Permapastures Perma Perma Farm, Pastures Farm mm -hmm. and told him our situation, what we're dealing with. And his first thing was animals, 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 get animals on it. Mm -hmm. So why animals? Animals put obviously naturally fertilized with Either manure, with manure. So and then um, we also found rotational grazing with chickens too as a secondary. So sheep first, they'll eat down the green stuff coming up, the shoots, the things they can do. We're also supplementing them with hay, of course, because we don't have good pasture yet, but their manure that, and we're going to move them every few days. Then we move the chickens in behind them. The chickens scratch the manure. They eat the larvae that do. They try to eat some of the parasites. So they're kind of coming in, spreading everything around, pecking and scratching, getting things moving, um, and things growing. So that if you think about it, it makes sense because when you're making compost, just in the like little time that we've spent like trying to make compost, um, we haven't been diligent about it, but you do learn that greens and browns, right? So we're getting the greens from the natural grasses. You're getting it from the fertilizer within the animal. So they're manure. So that's your green. And then if you're doing the chop and drop pr process, which is chopping down what's here, dropping it, leaving it, that creates kind of a top like soil that's going to mix with the fertilizer. And that's what's going to feed your soil which changes the pH. So what does change in the pH do? Well, and, I, and I'm not good about up and down. Our pH is low, right? Yeah. Okay, so natural, and I've read about natural forest land is naturally. This is about like a four and a half. -ish. Very low pH, which is what lime does. Lime tries to change the pH. So you can do the same thing with animals. There's, there's a, a second part that goes with the animals, which is what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. So I looked at, I listened to some things and there's, what I could find was three main ways to try to encourage growth of good grasses. The, uh, all the chemicals, which is out, uh, the animals, which we definitely like. And also the guy said, mo, 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 keep, keep the weeds low because they'll suffocate out the good grasses as they're trying to come in. So right now we've begun the process of mowing. So in the land that was cleared, there are tons of crystals and rocks and pieces of wood and all kind of things to the point where I don't, we couldn't bring a brush hog in here yet, but the weeds were, you know, getting waist high, briars everywhere. It's, you can't really walk through it and pick things up because there's so much scrabble and brush and briars that are just getting torn up. So what I'm doing now is I'm going through with a mulching mower, an old one that we had, and cutting all these brambles down, cutting all the broom sedge down, getting everything low, and, and in the meantime, Lorena and the boys are picking up the crystals and stacking rocks and getting them out of here and burning brush piles of all, all the wood that we're, we're, we're coming And we're across. utilizing those too. So all of the uh, sticks that we're picking up and through all of the clearing and the rocks and all the things, we're utilizing that. So number one, the, the piles that we're creating of the burnt sticks, that creates the ash or the charcoal, and that is really good for the soil. So then we'll go through and we'll rake out those piles, give it back to the soil. Um, that's the carbon. So then with the rocks, we're going through, and how are we utilizing those rocks? In what ways? Well, the boys are collecting the rocks and Lorena in, in a wagon, and we we live on a sloped land. I don't, I don't know what the slope would be, but it's it's a pretty good slope, which means when it rains and it rains hard, everything runs downhill. Yeah, the one side of our house has about like a foot or it's like flush with the service door. The other side of our house has a crawl space on it with like a seven foot roof. So that kind of tells you the gradual progression of the slope. It's not super dramatic, although our driveway is, um, but yeah, we're definitely on a slope. Yeah, it's about seven, seven feet every 50 feet. So it's it's pretty good slope and it runs downhill quick when it's raining hard. Yeah. So we've encased our garden with timbers to keep the water from rushing the garden out. And what they're using the rocks for is to, to fill up some of these areas where we have a lot of the erosion mm -hmm. um, to stop that from taking, continuing to take the dirt away. So those rocks are, are being used. And we use it also around our like fire pit area. We have like an area with rock with mulch inside that has our fire pit and chairs. And then we also have an area where our pool 
the above ground pool goes and right now it's obviously not out and so we have just this rock area with table and chairs inside with mulch so we are utilizing that rock in other ways we have them around our like what do you call those faucets those in ground faucets shallow wells a shallow well so we have them at the base of those so you can definitely like repurpose a lot of what we're doing here as we're clearing it so we're going to talk a little bit more about our current process and where we want it to be also so like i said we're using a, um, an old mulching mower the reason is as i said the, the sticks and the rocks and the things that are in the way bringing in a brush hog or renting one or having someone come in and cut this um there's tons of little booby traps in here and big huge crystal rocks and big pieces yeah. of wood and things like that so we're piecing through this slowly so I can see what I'm coming up against. Mulching this is turning it into browns, like Lorena said, a layer on top of the ground mm -hmm. that's going to degrade and break down and feed chop the soil. Chop and drop, yeah. Um, so we're about, we're over halfway done. It's about two acres. Can she go with them? Okay, we had a little distraction. The dog was chasing the kids down to the property line and <laughs> we don't want to make sure she stays this way so so yeah so we're doing the chop and drop we're doing the cleanup that creates the ph that we want it's working toward towards it. that yeah. yeah by itself it wouldn't be nearly enough but right. it's like little increments little increments first the browns and then keeping the grass low we're going to continue to mow this we're going to get a beat up old riding mower for the boys to cut we're going to keep this low the weeds low so the grass has space to come in mm -hmm. as as soon as we're done clearing this, the fencing's gonna start, and then we're gonna work toward getting the sheep on the land. But that's kind of our progression. Right now we're in step of cutting all this down, getting a layer of browns on top, uh, making room for good grass to come. Um, that was another thing we, we learned through research. Along with the animals, and especially before the animals get here, keep yeah. this mowed down. Mow, 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 keep the weeds low so the grasses have a chance to come in when the nutrition is right. And as the, the pH changes and as the nutrition of the soil changes. Um, and we've tried like throwing seed down when we first moved here and it just does not, it doesn't stay because of the slope, but also the ground is, 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 it's not fertile enough for that seed to, to germinate. So yeah, you can throw some seed on it, but it's, it's still not prepped <laughs> the way that it needs to be for that seed to really take root, especially if you're on a slope. So that really is not effective. Uh, we, our goal is to not use like almost any seed on this at this point. Um, we're just laying the groundwork and then the sheep are going to come through with the chickens and kind of do the rest of their end of the work. And then um, after that, at that point, if the sheep need more within their diet, then we would look at kind of overseeding or seeding the pasture that way. So the other addition to that is when we first get sheep, we know that this land cannot feed sheep. We know that. This is scrub brush and weeds. Now they're going to get a little bit of stuff out of this, but not nearly enough to... to to be a whole diet for them. So we know we're gonna have to put hay down and that's another advantage. Hay has seeds in it. They're gonna tear that, that hay apart. They're gonna eat it. They're gonna poop out some seeds that pass through their system. Mm -hmm. Even more stuff going into the soil, creating a chance for those seeds to take hold because they're coming out with manure, with fertilizer with them. So as they stomp and walk through that hay and they eat that hay and they pass some of the seeds from that hay, that's just another layer of trying to build grasses and build soils. Um, and that'll continue to keep going and keep getting better with all those different layers. So we're kind of in maybe step two. Clearing the line was step one when we first cleared it. Now we're getting the brush knocked down and fencing, kind of step two. And then animals and hay, kind of step three moving forward. And we'll, we'll talk later in videos once we get the fencing going of how we're going to break that up, what we're going to do and things like that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what it was like, what it's like now, the process that we're going through. Um, and I hope that that gives you just a little bit of hope um, for your journey. If you have already bought uh, property and you're building on raw land, please comment below. Would love to connect with you. If you already have land 
um, and you haven't even built on it, please comment below. Um, I really hope that this encourages people that, yes, the property is not exactly the way that we would have it, but yes, there are solutions. Um, going through and just snapping our fingers is not realistic, right? So anyhow, we're going to wrap up this video. I hope that this was, this was helpful to you. Please hit the like button and pound that subscribe uh, to get future updates. We are going to be doing this as part of our pasture series. So we'll catch you on the next video.